Hello, hello, yay. Is it Colleen? Yes, hi. Hello, Colleen, good to meet you. Yeah, I'm glad I asked you about the time zone thing. <laughs> I would have been off. It can be quite tricky and, and I'm not that good at it either. So I'm never too sure when I give somebody an answer if I've told them the right thing. <laughs> So well done for us getting it together at the same time. Hello, Julie. Yeah. I can't I can't see you or hear you. Um, hello. Uh, hello, no, Julie. I, I'm used to muting myself and uh, not showing my face on Zooms these days. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't I mind. Do, so. That's because I do that. I do that every day for work. So. Okay. Okay. And and um, normally when I've got a big group. I start with the, the mics muted anyway, because the one night we had a lady who was slipping through a straw. Um, but <laughs> I do like to see your faces when I've got a big group, because I normally, when I have questions asked, then I ask people just to put up their hands so that everyone doesn't talk over everybody else. So if you want to participate, then uh, show your face. Hello. Benedict, how do I just uh, how do I say that? Benedict, that's fine. Benedict, is that correct? It's good to yes. meet you. Hello, and I see we've got Mariette joining us. Hello, Mariette, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> okay, so while we are waiting for everybody to join in. Um, I'm just going to mention a couple of things. Number one, I do have an online course that teaches you how to dye your fabric in a washing machine. So if there's anything that I don't cover today that you would like to learn about, when I post this video um, afterwards, when I post the recording to the group, I will share the link to the online course with you guys also so that um, if, you, if you want detailed information, you can access that. Then I also had somebody ask me today, they asked about my Patreon program and they say they're not very clear on what it involves. So I've got a Patreon channel where you can subscribe. Um, it's a monthly program that you can subscribe to at an amount that works for you. So basically you choose a tier that you can afford and that offers you the benefits that you want to receive. And then every month I send you those benefits and they include things like uh, access to my podcast, um, tutorials, videos, eBooks, online courses. And then today I've just added, because Patreon has, has added a wonderful uh, new function um, that you can get mugs and tote bags and things like that also. So I'm going to try those out for a couple of months, see if anybody's interested in those. Um, so there's all sorts of benefits that you can sign up for. So basically you get a guided learning experience every month. Uh, the disadvantage is that you can't pick your topics because I just send out general topics that I hope people are interested in. Whereas if you want specific information on specific topics, then I recommend that you uh, look at my list of online courses and then choose the ones that you need from there. So there are different ways of working. Some people want a subscription, some people just want to cherry pick courses. And I've got systems set up for both so that you can access both. Okay, I think that it looks like this is likely going to be the group. So, uh, have any of you dyed fabric in a washing machine before? A very long time ago. Okay, Colleen, you have? Um, not fabric, but clothing. Okay. My and son had a coat. Yes, clothes, clothing too. Okay, and Colleen, what was your experience like? <laughs> Um, it was not successful. It took a couple of times to get sort of partially successful. It okay. was a piece of fabric that, he, you know, it was a clothing thing that he bought. Um, and he wanted it to go from like a dark green to black. Yes. I think it had some sort of coating or a water repellent factor because like we dyed it several times to get it sort of more dark, but we didn't really get black, black. Okay. Um, but I think it was the nature of a coat meant for outdoors. But I'd okay. like to learn about the, the fabric. Colin? How do you determine what fabrics are good? Ramène-moi mes écouteurs, s'il te plaît. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll, I'll answer those questions uh, for you uh, in the talk. It helps if I know what your experience has been so that I can help you. Then Benedict, what was your uh, experience like? Um, I think I tried to, to dye um, clothing uh, which was which were which has been black at one time and was um, was becoming gray, mm. and it was okay because I used uh, curtain dyeing. Mm. I'm sorry, uh, I'm French. No, it's uh, all good. <laughs> um, I used curtain dyeing, and I dyed cotton, but only cotton. I never tried anything else. Okay. Okay, that's actually a good thing. Then you've probably had a happier result than uh, trying to work with yeah, other yeah. fabrics and fibers. I was and, really very careful. Ah, okay. Nice and then AD, welcome to the group. Um, I can't see you or hear you, but I, I know that you're there. Um, if you have anything to say, will you please just uh, unmute yourself and speak up because I'm not sure um, if you've got any questions for me. Hi, um, Hello. I, I have absolutely no experience of dying in a washing machine. Okay. Very keen. Okay. Very keen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then, then I know where you're at. Hello, Anita. Good to meet you. Um, Anita, uh, do, have you had any experience working with dyes in a washing machine? Um, a little bit. That's why I wanted to get more information. Okay, and, and how was your experience? I was just doing jeans. I was just recoloring my jeans. It worked fine. It was fine. Okay, okay, awesome. So you've had a happy result. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Hello, Angela. Good to see you. Okay, Angela is still connecting to her audio, so I'm not going to talk to her yet. All right, uh, while we are waiting for everybody to get in, I'll just start with a little introduction. Um, when you dye fabric in a washing machine, the same guidelines apply as to when you are dyeing in a pot or doing tie dyeing or anything like that. The most important thing to remember is that you need to match your chemical with your fiber source. So a lot of people think that if they buy a dye that it's going to dye everything. And that's not the case. Uh, for every single fiber source, there is a specific chemical that works better on that fiber source. So if you have matched your fiber source and your dye correctly, then you're, you, the battle's already half, half won. Um, if you've bought a dye that works specifically on plant fibers like cotton, then the chemical actually binds to the cellulose in the fiber. So if you then have a polyester blend, then uh, the polyester portion of that fabric stays uh, white. And uh, Colleen, going back to your experience, there is a chance that the fabric uh, was not coated, but that it was a polycotton blend and it was the polyester content that also affected your results. So you might be correct that uh, it did have a coating, but if the fabric was, had a lot of polyester in it, then it also would have resisted the color quite a lot. And, and very often when people say to me they, they only got a gray result, uh, my, my first guess is always that it was a polycotton blend because uh, if you try to dye a polycotton to a dark color, you get this gray melange effect. Everything looks gray, whether you use navy, black, brown, dark green, dark purple, any of your dark heavy tones, they all read as gray when you've finished. So if there's resistance to taking up the color, then it normally is because it's got a polyester content or because your fiber and your chemical are not matched. Then uh, another thing that you always need to take into account is the temperature at which the dye works best. Now, please do not just read on the internet what they say on, on the internet. So for example, people who are using Procyon dyes, <clears throat> excuse me, will say that you don't need to heat a dye to get good results. Um, many of the other brands of dye do need to be heated and some of them need to be boiled even 
So some of them have an optimum temperature of 65 to 70 degrees. Your, most of your fiber reactive dyes need 65 to 70 degrees. And then there are still some that need boiling at 100 degrees. And you cannot make an assumption about any of them that you're working with, that they will work the same way that another one did. So always, always check on your actual, um, on your actual packaging of the fabric that you, of the product that you've bought and make sure that um, you know what temperature that product needs to be used at. So don't just mush together all the information that you've read off the internet and assume that it's going to work. So try, try to stick as far as close as possible to the instructions on the labeling. And also read those instructions very carefully. I know we've got a brand of dye that you can buy in South Africa called Lady Dye that I used very successfully in the, in the 1990s. But it took me about five tries to get it right because the instructions were very, very small. And when you read the instructions of that particular brand of dye, you have to read quite far into the instructions before you read the, the words that say, if you use this at a higher temperature, you'll get better results. So um, don't just assume, don't skim through the instructions. I really recommend that you read through the instructions quite thoroughly before you start working with the product and just make sure, I know it can be frustrating and I know that it, 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 they can be very small and it can sometimes be like white noise in your head. Maybe even as you're reading, make just basic notes for yourself of the most important things that the instructions say and then work from that. Angela, did you have a question? No. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> figure out the whole system. I never knew how to get my daughter to make me to hear you. I couldn't hear the whole, okay. the whole start. I didn't hear nothing. But anyway, now. Okay, okay. And I am going to post a recording of this on the group. Uh, there will be a replay so that you can catch the bit that you missed. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so um, going back to dyeing in the washing machine. Now, um, one of the other challenges that people have when dyeing in a washing machine is that a lot of people expect to get a smooth, even color. And then some people end up with a mottled or crackled effect where the result is blotchy. And that will happen when the fabric stands still in the washing machine. So if you have a washing machine that stops for a long period of time, then what happens is the fabric is sitting there and while it's stopped, gravity has a chance to deposit your dye particles on the upper surfaces, but it doesn't get to the bottom. And then you end up with these crackled effects. So if your washing machine is one of those machines that is just programmed that way, that it stands still for a long time between cycles, you might not get an even smooth result. That's one of the other frustrations that people have when they dye fabric in a washing machine is that uh, they end up with these mottled and crackled results and uh, then they're very unhappy with it. And that blotchy effect is, is not a function of the chemistry. It's not the chemistry that it hasn't worked. It's, it's a physical thing that happens where the fabric is crushed for a long period of time and uh, it stands still and then gravity has a chance to deposit chemicals on some of the surfaces. Now, if you want to get better results, then work in a washing machine that has a constant cycle if possible. I know that's not always possible because you want to work in the washing machine that you have. Um, and also give it space. So a lot of people think, well, I can do it in my washing machine. It's going to be convenient. Let me cram as much stuff in as I possibly can. And that will also give you uh, blotchy effects. Uh, for a smooth, even color, the, the, the best way to get a smooth, even color is to give the fabric lots of space in the liquid. 
so that it can slush around and move around and all of those surfaces can continuously have uh, this liquid bashed into all of the surfaces at the same rate. As soon as they're confined in a space, you're going to find that there is more blotchiness. Yay, we've got Kate joining us too. So if possible, you actually want to, you don't want to overload the machine. You want to put in just a few items and try with that. Now, one of the best machines that I've ever worked in for dyeing fabrics, and this is going to sound strange, is a twin tub washing machine. Now, everyone gets very excited about an automatic top loader or something like that because it's so convenient. But with a twin tub, you can actually control the process much, much better. So with a twin tub, for example, you can put the water in boiling hot from a pot. Um, I used to actually run a hose pipe directly off my geyser that I set to maximum, which meant that the, the water would hit the machine at the optimum temperature that I needed it to be for the chemical that I was working with. Then I was also able with my eyes to monitor what was going on in the tub all the time. And with a twin tub, you can keep it moving all the time. Um, you can just keep resetting it as many times as you want to until the fabric is, is as dark and as coated as you want it to be. And then you're also able to take it out very quickly and put it into the spinner and spin out the excess dye quite quickly and effectively. So although an automatic machine is wonderful for washing, washing, I do recommend that if you're going to do lots of dyeing and if you want to do it for, on a commercial level, then a twin tub might be the way to go um, for better results. Then something else that people sometimes complain about is that uh, after they've used their washing machine for dyeing, then they end up with stains in their washing that they do afterwards. Now what tends to happen there is that sometimes you will get some of the dye powder will make a lump and that lump will go and sit in a pipe somewhere, one of the pipes on the machine, a drainage pipe or something, or somewhere in the workings of the machine. And then afterwards, when you do your regular washing, it dislodges, it comes loose, and then it gets into uh, your regular washing. So I really, really recommend that if you do plan to dye anything in your washing machine, that after you've done your dyeing, you do a full cycle, a long full cycle, and, and even a hot one, top, top heat that your machine will do, okay? And just let it run. It's worth using the extra water just to rinse the machine out and make sure that you don't end up with any oopsies on your, on your other garments that are, that are quite precious. And I would really recommend that even after that, the first load of washing that you do is your blacks and your polyester stuff. Don't go straight to washing your whites after that, just in case there's still something stuck there. Um, the product is water soluble. It likes to dissolve in water and these accidents still happen. You don't know when there's a residue that's got stuck somewhere, if it was a little lump that got stuck somewhere, then you don't know where it is and, and how it's gonna dislodge or not. One of the other things that I also recommend you do if you are dyeing fabric in a washing machine is that before you add your dye powder, you actually mix it up to a paste and then you water it down and you pour it into your machine if you can in a liquid state. Because those powders um, might not dissolve, they might make lumps, they might clump up in places and that can also cause blotching on your garments. So if at all possible, you want to uh, first make it to a paste so that you make sure you've got all the lumps and everything out with a mortar and pestle. And then you add some more water to make it liquid. And then you put it into, into your machine if you can. Okay, do any of you have any questions about what I've just discussed? Anybody got a hand up? Yes, Benedict. Sorry, um, when you have a, a fabric that is mixed uh, like polycotton, yes. what can you do to dye it? 
can you dye it once with a uh, cotton um, chemical products and then with uh, products dedicated to um, to polyester yes you can yes you can you can you can but then I recommend that you do them separately because the two different chemicals will have different requirements okay very likely so very likely the polyester dye will need more heat okay and on that note for the south africans in the room there are no polyester dyes that you can buy commercially in south africa just to answer that question before it comes up um, there are in some countries you can buy over-the-counter dyes for polyester and in fact in south africa there's one that might do it is garane um, i think they do a polyester dye but then you must do each one separately and each one must be be done according to the specifications of that product so you first dye the cotton po portion of your fabric and you use a cotton dye at those temperatures and then you do use a polyester dye and it, and and you then uh, work to the specifications of that chemical okay does that make sense hello kate it's nice to see you hi thank you I have trouble joining you, but I'm here now. <laughs> oh, lovely. It's lovely to see you. And I will be I will be uh, sharing a video recording of this afterwards. So if there's anything that any of you have missed, um, you can watch the replay. Okay. Well, I, I got all the, um, um, I, I didn't get the, the pictures of you, but I, I, I've got all the, all what you've said. So that, that's okay. fine. Okay, fantastic. I, I have a quick question, Melanie. Yes, is um, if the one of the pieces that I'm looking to dye has uh, cotton, polyester, and spandex in it. Yes. Is polyester and spandex similar in types of dyes that are required? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Normally, the spandex is a very small portion of the blend, normally mm -hmm. less than five percent, and your spandex is what gives the fabric its stretch. Mm -hmm. Now, my biggest worry with a blend like that would be that the, the heat of the polyester dye is going to kill the spandex. Okay, because you know what happens to anything stretchy that you put in very, very high temperatures. That's it kind true. of kills the stretch. Mm -hmm. So you might find that once you've got it the color you want it to be, that then that stretch, those stretch properties will have then blown out. The fabric might then be very limp and, and no longer have that ability to, to come back again. You may even see those little fibers break. Um, it's like a, a swimming costume if you put it into very, very hot water. Um, that's the kind of effect that you're going to get. But again, normally in a fabric like that, the spandex is only 5% of the blend. So we might be overthinking of it. Okay. And what I would recommend is if you are very um, dedicated to doing the job, maybe just cut a small swatch of the fabric and test it. So put it in some boiling water and see what happens. Okay. Does Thank that you. make sense? Okay. Yes. Angela, did you have a question? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? I do. Um, yes. what, it, this is, comes from reading the directions. Um, what is the role of salt? Uh, we use RIT dye in the United States, and sometimes the packaging recommends like table salt. OK, so salt increases the vibrancy of your color. It makes it more vibrant. Uh, the color is actually fixed to the fabric by the mordant or your fixative and uh, typically your mordant will change the pH of the liquid and it's that pH change that then causes the color to bond with the fabric. So if you leave your salt out you will get pastel colors okay but they should be color fast if you've included your mordant. If you put your salt in and you leave your mordant out, you'll get a color that's very bright to begin with, but it will fade over time. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you want maximum vibrancy and wash fastness, you need both chemicals. Okay, any questions? Yes, Angela. 
So I can't hear you. Okay. I'm still learning, sorry. No worries. Um, regarding the that we find in our shops. Yes. Um, it's not a big variety. It's very, very little um, uh, available that I found in Cape Town. Um, yes. But the colors are, it just doesn't come out nice. So I wanted to ask if you can recommend something that uh, it's stronger or better that okay. I can buy. For example, I, I, I make big quantities of clothing yes. and um, I want to on a bigger amount. But yes. whatever I bought in the shops, it's no good quality. It's, it, it doesn't work well. So please, if you can recommend me something that can cover a higher quantity of, of fabric. Okay, so in South Africa, there really is only one brand that you can buy in bulk, large quantities. I'm just going to mute you again because there's some um, background noise coming through. So in South Africa, um, there really is only one brand that you can buy in bulk quantities, and that's the Slipstream dye. So Slipstream dye you can get from X Factor Crafts, uh, from a lady called Hanneke van Linger. It is very reliable. It used to be my brand. It's actually the brand that I developed because I couldn't get uh, quality dye in bulk myself when I was manufacturing clothing. So I actually developed the brand, but a couple of years ago, I, I found I was doing too many things and I had to commit myself to one course of action. So I've actually handed the brand over to Hanukkah. She's one of my stockists and one of my old school friends. And um, you can still get the dye from her. And she does 250 gram, 500 gram and one kilo packs. If you are in the USA, then you can get uh, bulk quantities of dyes from Pro Chemical and from Dharma Trading. Um, in Europe, I'm not sure of, of any brand that does uh, big, big quantities. Um, I think you might be able to get something from Dylon in bulk quantities uh, because Dylon is, uh, I think it's a UK based company. Um, yes, but, it is. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's Are you Dylon. able? Are you able to get Dylon in bulk, Kate? Yeah, we're in, I'm in the UK. Okay. And, and Dylon comes in a box already with the salt added that you just okay. add to the uh, washing machine and yes. it does a, a washer load of dyeing and yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, so Dylon would be where you would go if you're in the UK and uh, USA is, and Canada, I suppose, would be uh, Pro Chemical and Dharma Trading. And then South Africa, uh, it's Slipstream. Okay, are there any other questions? Any other questions? Have yep. I covered most things? Okay, one other challenge that you might have if you are re-dyeing clothing in your washing machine is that if the clothing has a food spill on it, so you've messed an oily something on the front of your shirt, that might also result in blotching. So uh, oils and solvents will create blotches on the garment. So if at all possible, try to wash that oily mark out before you try to dye it. Then something else, dye is translucent color, it's see-through. So it's not a block out. So if your base is uneven, your result will be uneven. So if it's got a darker mark on a lighter background, and especially if you're dyeing it a lightish color, that mark will always be visible. And even if you're dyeing it to black and there's a mark on it, that mark might still be visible because, because the color is quite translucent. And what often happens to people, they'll get frustrated because they'll dye something to a darker color and then that mark a couple of washes in will still be visible there. So I recommend if there's something like that that's really going to bother you, then put paint over it, make it look intentional, stamp something on it or, or do something, make it look intentional rather than trying to get rid of it. Okay, so Zoom has just let me know that it's going to cut us off shortly. So I would like to thank all of you for joining me. I hope that you learned something from this. 
And thank you so much for participating. Thank you for the thumbs up, Benedict. I appreciate it. And I will definitely be sharing this uh, on the main group. And if any of you want detailed information, please, I will, when I post this, add the online course, the link to that also. Um, I appreciate any of you who buy my online courses. It's, it's how I manage to do all the things I do the way I do them. So thank you for joining me today and good luck with your projects. Thank you. Thank pleasure. you very much. It's a Thank huge you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for bye participating. Bye. Bye-bye.